my name is Mario Dusai, and in today's video, I will show you how to create custom endpoints inside of OpenIDM 3.0. In today's hypothetical uh, situation, I have a custom UI that needs the ability to get the session for the currently logged in user uh, through REST API. So to get started, we of course need three things. Uh, the first thing is an OpenIDM installation that is configured and running properly. The next thing is a configuration file. Uh, the configuration file is what tells OpenIDM what scripts to use and what name to give this endpoint within its system. The configuration files are stored within the conf directory, that's C-O-N-F, and every endpoint configuration file is always prefixed with endpoint hyphen. That's then followed by an endpoint name, and this can be anything that makes sense for your application, and it's always a .json file format. In today's example, my file is called endpoint-getcookie.json. The final piece is a script file. The script file is what is actually performing the operations to make this API function and provide some information back to the caller. Uh, by default, the script file is stored in the script directory, and there's no real naming convention for the script files, at least nothing that is imposed by OpenIDM. So you can make these names to be anything that makes sense for you. Uh, the only thing that is imposed by OpenIDM is that these files are either .groovy or .js for JavaScript. In today's situation, I'm using a file name of getcookie.groovy. So to get into a little bit more details, I will start first in the configuration file. Uh, so this is my endpoint uh, getcookie.json file, and you see that there are four different lines here. Uh, the first two are not prefixed with an underscore, and the last two are. Uh, this underscore basically tells OpenIDM to ignore these files, or these lines rather. Uh, this is treated kind of like a like a commenter, or to comment out these lines. The first two lines, uh, file and type, are basically telling OpenIDM what file to use. This is a script file, and it's also telling OpenIDM that it's is stored inside of the root of the script directory. If I wanted to, I could store this in another file or another directory like UI. But in that case, in the case for today, it doesn't make sense. So I'm going to keep it in the root directory. Uh, the type tells the scripting language of my script file. And that is, of course, Groovy. The next piece to look at is the script file itself. Now, I'm not going to get into too much details here, um, but uh, you see a whole bunch of import statements at the top. Uh, not all of this in this file as it is used right now is necessary. Uh, I will be adding on to the script file, so that's why I have these here. But for right now, all I really need is the uh, query, query request. Uh, the next thing that uh, is important to look at here are the conditional statements. Uh, these conditional statements are basically taking the request that's coming in from the API and seeing whether it is an instance of this query request. I want my API, in this case, to be a get action. So I'm using query request. If this condition matches, then we go down to the next line, which is then checking the query ID. So since this is a get operation, it, it will also be providing me with a query ID. And in this case, get session is what I want it to provide to me. This can vary. This is a variable. It doesn't matter really what is provided in here. This could be get cookie, get token, but I like get session. If both of these conditions are met, I then move down to return the data that uh, was promised by the endpoint. Uh, in this case, it is the uh, session, which is tucked away within the user context 
object uh, all the way underneath headers that cookie. Now, if somebody were to provide a different HTTP action to me instead of get, I am then presenting them with the message that says that action is not supported so that they know what the error message is. It wasn't just some generic internal error. I'm actually providing some helpful message back to them. So now to move on, I want to go into OpenIDM and make sure that this is part of the services that are currently running. So I'll, we'll type inside of OpenIDM console SCR list and I see that I have a whole bunch of endpoints from 14 all the way to 23. Uh, in this case I happen to know that my endpoint is number 14 so I am going to take a look at that and make sure that it is the right endpoint and that it, that it is active. So I see that uh, this is the uh, get cookie. It is enabled, it is active and now I also see what the URL will be. This will be openidm slash endpoint slash get cookie. And of course we know that the action expected is get. So when I go into my Postman REST clients, I know what to type in. I will set this to the get action. I will update this to provide the uh, query ID of get session. Okay, once that's all set up and typed in correctly, I hit send. And now I see that my endpoint is responding to me with a valid session ID for the currently authenticated user. Now I also want to test out to see that the wrong or the failure message will come back when I post a, uh, a message on, as a post action. So this I will change to action equals get token or get session, doesn't really matter here. Because basically what the endpoint is doing is checking that the correct action is coming over. And we see that it's not. So the message responded back to the calling user is actions not supported. So now we have a working endpoint that is providing some useful data. I hope that this uh, demonstration was useful to you today. And happy coding.